Hello there my RPG fans to yet another video about Outward. After a melee guide, I decided it would be a good time to cover some magic in this game. I will cover all playstyles regardless, but magic videos are highly requested. In this video, I will specifically show you the playstyle of a rune mage. There is a lot of space for tweaking this depending on the other skills and items that you prefer to use, so don't think that I'm showing you the only way to approach this playstyle. We're actually gonna start off by showcasing all the rune combinations that you can do, so that you know exactly what can you expect by investing your precious silver in this tree. So what is a rune mage you might ask? Well, it's pretty simple to explain. You can learn these 4 rune spells from a trainer in Berg, the main city of Enmarkar Forest. You'll need to carry a lexicon in your offhand in order to cast runes unless you learn an expensive skill that will eliminate this need but more on that later. When casted by themselves, these spells do nothing. You have to at least combine 2 rune spells in order for something to happen. The developers describe this as a ritualistic step-by-step -step approach to magic. It might seem intimidating, but it's quite simple after you use it for a while. We're starting off by showing you the first combinations that you can cast when you only learn the 4 runes without spending a breakthrough point and going deeper in this tree. We got Daz, the blue rune, Egot, the purple rune, Fel, the green rune, and Shim, the red rune. Without making things too complicated, you can only have 4 different combinations from these 4 rune spells if you don't decide to go deeper in the tree. And these are the combinations. Casting Dez plus Egot will give you a runic protection buff with 15% physical resistance and plus true protection. It will last for quite some time and it gives you this nice green effect around you. Casting Fell plus Dez will result in runic lantern effect which basically eliminates the need for carrying a lantern with you. It will last for 300 seconds. Casting Shim plus Egot will give you a runic blade with 28 eternal damage. Really good weapon actually with great damage considering you can learn it early in the playthrough. Eternal damage will melt ghosts and Endmarker Forest is full of them. The last combination you can cast is done by casting Shim plus Fell. This combination will place a magic trap on the ground that will detonate when enemies are nearby. You can place it before the combat and lure NPCs on it or you can be aggressive and cast it while in the fight. It will activate immediately if the enemy is nearby. And that will be all for the rune combos you can do if you don't decide to go deeper in this tree. Even with only these 4 spells you can do quite a lot with clever mana management, learning to wield a one handed sword and your AO trap. I forgot to mention that this trap will do AoE damage actually, so it's a really powerful tool. Let's move on deeper in the rune sage tree. In order to progress further, we need to spend our precious breakthrough point and 600 silver. You'll get a nice boost in mana, 40 points to be exact, and these 3 really powerful passive effects that will modify your rune spells and add new spells from different combinations. We're gonna start off by learning arcane syntax which will unlock all rune combinations. Everything I showed you so far is still the same, but now we can have more combinations and different results. Let me show you. Casting Dez plus Egot will still give you that rune protection, but if you cast Egot plus Dez after you already have runic protection buff on you, you'll get this instant heal spell that will consume your runic protection. So it's Dez plus Egot plus Egot plus Dez. Of course, you can consume your runic protection buff whenever you choose by just casting Egot plus Dez and you'll get the heal effect. Turning your runic protection into a heal is the first new effect we got by learning the arcane syntax, but let's move on. Remember a runic sword that you get by casting Shim plus Egot? Well, now you can turn it into a two-handed sword by casting the same combo again while you have your runic sword. So basically cast Shim plus Egot again and you'll turn your one-handed sword into a two-hander. This will unequip your lexicon, so you won't be able to cast runes while holding the sword if you don't have the skill we're gonna talk about a bit later. The two-handed runic blade does 39 damage. Really solid damage all around with nice amount of impact damage. The next combo requires of you to have your runic lantern active. Then, when you cast Fell plus Shim, you'll fire this energy projectile. You can cast it as long as you have the mana and it won't consume your runic lantern, so you can pretty much spam Fell plus Shim and fire these balls of lightning. And the last added effect is for our magic trap. So you get your magic trap by casting Shim plus Fell, then while it's active, if you cast Shim twice in a row, you'll detonate the trap manually. That will pretty much cover all what arcane syntax does, and now let's take the next skill in the tree called runic prefix. It will basically add more effects on top of our existing rune combination spells. 
Starting off with our simple runic protection, it will boost its effectiveness by adding 5 more physical resistance and add extra 10% to other resistances. If we consume the runic protection to get the heal, we'll get a short 10 second buff as well that will recover 2 health per second. Our runic lantern is now amplified as well and it lasts for 450 seconds. One handed runic blade will get additional lighting damage and this fancy glow as well. Two handed runic blade will get additional DK damage. And that should be all what runic prefix does. Although there might be more not so obvious effects added, I'm not really sure. I also must give props to Steam user Moini who made this really useful chart for all the effects we mentioned above. The last passive ability you can learn is internalized lexicon. Beware though, you can have both of the last skills in the tree so choose carefully. Internalized lexicon will eliminate the need for a lexicon while casting runes, allowing you to use a two-hander like the one you can get with the runes and still cast runes with the two-hander equipped. You can of course equip whatever you like and cast runes, there are just a lot of possibilities here. And that's pretty much it for the rune sage tree. It's a really really unique approach to casting magic. Its effectiveness will depend almost entirely on your playstyle. You can have different approaches to fights which makes this playstyle a lot of fun when you get used to it. Not to mention that you can combine it with two other different trainers. I have some builds on the way with this in mind so stay tuned. It's worth mentioning again that for this guide I made a new character and played for about 5 hours in total to be able and learn all the skills in the rune sage tree. So if you focus on maxing this tree as fast as possible you can expect around the same play time, a bit more or less here and there depending on your luck with RNG loot. The gear you can see on my character can be bought for about 350 silver in total and it will give you a nice reduction to your mana cost. When I unlocked mana I decided to go with 5 points invested which gave me 100 mana. You can go with less because you will find the gear with lots of mana reduction but 5 points will guarantee you a good start as a rune mage in the beginning. Ok guys that will pretty much cover the sage tree, I hope it was easy to understand and be sure to press the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel because there is a lot more content coming out. Thanks for the amazing support and special thanks to my patrons. If you as well want to support this channel consider checking it out. You can find all the links in the description. My channel is based around RPGs in general, so if you're into those games, be sure to check it out. See ya in the next one.